Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this year's virtual Bosnian and Herzegovinian Film Festival. Greetings from New York City, and thank you for supporting us and watching the films and uh, keeping the conversation going wherever you are in the world. Uh, we hope that you are well and safe. My name is Diana Jelica, and I am uh, a co-programmer of the festival. Uh, tonight's Q&A is for the film Stitches, an incredibly powerful film uh, that we will be discussing um, with the director and um, uh, some, a cast member and producer. Um, and I will now introduce the director and my co-programmer Amir Husak will introduce our other guests before we start the conversation. So the director of this film is Miroslav Terzic who uh, was born in Belgrade, and he is actually tuning in from Belgrade tonight. Um, he graduated at the University of Belgrade uh, International Law Department. He has also attended bachelor degree studies at Belgrade Academy for Film and Drama at Belgrade University. And as of 2000, he worked as a freelance artist, director, and screenwriter. Um, he also worked as an assistant director and uh, uh, he's known for, other than this film, for films like Redemption Street and Underground. Uh, welcome, Miroslav. And now Amir will introduce our other two guests before we start the conversation. Amir. Thank you, Diana. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our last Q&A of this festival. Thank you for being with us all this time. Uh, I am delighted and I have the pleasure to, to introduce uh, Snežana and Ulix to you again. Uh, Snežana Bogdanovic is one of the most prominent actresses from former Yugoslavia in both theater and film. She's a recipient of multiple national awards in theater, and she also became known for her leading roles in films such as Kudus, Original Forgery, and My Brother Alexa. Snežana was nominated for the European Film Award and also won a Special Spirit uh, Award in 1989. Welcome, Snežana. Ulix Femiu, the producer, uh, is, a, is a Belgrade born and New York based actor and producer who are known for films such as, uh, such as Redemption Street in 2012, Our Everyday Life in 2015, and Well Tempered Corpses in 2005. Um, he also guest starred on Law and Order, a, a popular TV series. His debut as a producer came in 2019 uh, with, the, with the film Stitches that we are showing uh, in our program and uh, which is also part of this Q&A, a film that will uh, also uh, uh, be uh, eligible for audience awards. So don't forget to vote if you, if you already watched it. Um, Welcome, Ulix. Welcome, Snežana. Welcome, Misha. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, everyone. Um, so my first question will go to our director, Miroslav. But before that, I do want to say we uh, one of our announced uh, guests, uh, Elma Tatragic, unfortunately couldn't be here with us tonight. Uh, we send our best regards and we miss her very much. Um, she is the screenwriter of the film and she is a long-term friend of BHFF. You may also know her as a programmer of Sarajevo Film Festival, our sister festival. Um, she is an incredibly accomplished screenwriter who has written screen um, uh, screen um, right uh, screenplays for uh, a notable films such as Snow by Aida Begic uh, and Teona Strugar Mitevska's God Exists. Her name is Petrunia more recently. So greetings to you, um, Elma, if you're watching. Um, so uh, Miroslav, I'm going to start with you. First of all, good evening. Uh, greetings to Belgrade. How are you? Just make sure to unmute yourself. Yes, yes, I unmute myself. Good evening. Uh, in Belgrade, it's 11 o'clock or just past 11 o'clock and everything is okay. Um, we, we sit at our home and uh, I talk to you there and uh, I'm very happy that you, I'm with you guys and that... Um, we will talk about stitches. I forgot about my film, really, because it's long time that we have a premiere, and somehow um, I'm very glad that I uh, I'm 
right now, now I able to talk uh, about film and about our journey that starts 18 years ago. That's a that's a good segue to my first question. Did you yeah. say 18 years ago? Yes, yes, okay. yes. That's quite yes. a long development time. And yes. maybe you can speak more about that and also uh, talk about how your collaboration with Elma Tatragic is the uh, screenwriter came to be. Yes, uh, I started to uh, to uh, think about this topic 18 years ago because I read an article in newspaper and for me it's uh, like unbelievable story and I thought it was like uh, some unique case but uh, from time to time I um, um, you know find uh, lots of articles about that and then um, I, I decided to, to write a film about it, but um, nothing happens really. I, I, I make, I write two scripts, uh, but I don't like that script at all. And then I met um, uh, Elma uh, on the Sarajevo Film Festival and I asked uh, her to join me in that, in that uh, uh, journey and uh, um, but we didn't have right stories there 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 is a lot of stories from the newspaper but somehow we cannot manage through that all of these stories all of these these uh, sad stories and then um, I met one day the very interesting woman. Uh, she's a sawyer and uh, she is probably most famous case here in Serbia. Um, uh, and I introduce myself and tell her that I want to make a film about her, about um, her and about her story. And uh, she told me that um, uh, she's ready. We can do it right now. And then we um, make an interview. And from that moment, uh, Elma and I have a very good, uh, very good, uh, you know, like backstory or backbone of our script. And then we start to write and uh, put uh, new ideas, but the base, you know, like the root of our story is the story of Drinka Radonic and uh, her fight with the system and with everyone and uh, her fight against the system. And, um, and for us, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, very, for me, it become very important topic somehow. And, uh, and I love that we, uh, you, we call Ulix and Snezhana and uh, everyone wants to tell that story because that story is very, very important for, for, for us and for our country and for us as a human being. Because um, I think this is, um, this is the, you know, basic thing. This is like basic right. This is like to be a mother. It's, it's something that is, you know, in the root of every normal civilized uh, people. And uh, we start that journey and Delma and I write, she's writing script and uh, everyone give us, give uh, uh, some, some thoughts about it and uh, we finished it I, let's say 2015 2016 and from that moment we start in start pre-production process and everyone came on board and then we start to uh, to work on this together but the the process with uh, Alma was perfect you know uh, she's a good friend of mine she is uh, for me it's important and I want it when I start to think about this topic I wanted that 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 script 
must be woman's right, you know, woman's right writer. And, uh, and uh, I found Delma and Delma on that time, um, on that time, Elma is, Elma um, um, is trying to, to, um, uh, you, you know, uh, when uh, with her, um, somehow Alma, I, I, I wrote, uh, I, I, I read this that I'm uh, stoned. I'm not stoned, my English is not good, but it's okay. <laughs> my English is not good, and I lost my, my, my thought, but it's okay. Um, so, um, so that that's it. that is it, you know. I forgot what I want to say, but it doesn't matter right now. We were talking about your collaboration with yeah, yeah, Alma, yeah. and actually what you just said with regards to um, uh, the development of this story taking so long, um, it almost mirrors uh, what came to my mind immediately is that it mirrors the sort of Kafka-esque process that our protagonist in the film is going through. It, for her, it almost was like years. that. Almost like in yeah. Kafka's process. Mm -hmm. Almost like yeah. in Kafka's process. There is a lot of closed door for for that lady, and um, it is um, somehow uh, um, the story of our life here, and uh, the story how one small woman can't find the the way uh, and to to you know, try to find uh, her boy and try to, um, try to, uh, f you know, uh, find uh, s something that is, you know, common, common people the right, you know. Absolutely, a small person's right. Um, when she actually, every step of the way is being made to think that she's crazy. Right. Um, yeah. And she knows that that's not the case. Uh, so that that comes across really powerfully. A small, um, um, ordinary human being, a mother in this case, fighting a system that is si signaling something entirely different every step of the way. So I'm really glad that you mentioned this um, wanting uh, a, a woman's voice uh, or a woman's writing to be part of the story and therefore deciding to collaborate with Elma yes. um, um, as a screenwriter. Uh, Amir, do you want to uh, take the next question? Sure, yes, no. Um, thank you. Thank you, Misha, also for, for uh, answering that. And uh, I want to kind of continue for where just Diana uh, kind of left off and uh, specifically the, the situation with with Anna, the, the central protagonist uh, played by Snezhana, uh, where there is this constant question and this sort of psychological tension, like uh, who to trust? Is it all just her kind of imagining these things? And do you, you did a remarkable job of kind of like keeping us in that sort of, you know, uh, within that tension throughout the film. And I would like to maybe to, to ask you, um, how was it from the directorial side to kind of translate that script really uh, that, that you worked with, with with Elma and also to ask Snezhana to, um, how do you kind of uh, impersonate someone who is who is struggling with these with these issues, uh, specifically in the context of the film? So whoever wants to take it first, Isha. Okay, I'll take it then. Um, uh, it's uh, what can I say? Yeah, as Misha said, I haven't thought about it for a long time. But uh, when I heard the story, it was a heart-wrenching moment for me, you know, because it is, uh, to me, you know, it wasn't just the opportunity to create a, a great character, which I'm grateful for, it was that as well. But uh, from the human perspective, it was the chance and the possibility uh, to put the light on one of these stories, you know, and there are many more in Belgrade. At the time when we were shooting, I think it was like around 500 
uh, uh, families claiming that their children were uh, abducted, you know, at birth. So uh, I was really excited to, to, to do this, you know, I was excited to, to meet this woman. And very early on in this process, while he was still writing the script with Elma, uh, he introduced Drinka to me, you know, and I and I always remember that day it was a rainy day in Belgrade, and uh, you know I visited her in her seamstress store, a uh, very tiny store in Belgrade, and I was impressed immediately how composed because because you know in, uh, I imagined things about her, how she would be, what kind of woman, uh, how would she look, you know, and and I was. From the first moment, I was impressed by her composure. She was uh, so calm and, uh, and uh, radiant, and, uh, uh, and I've sensed her strength and resilience. And uh, I just, you know, as I said, from that moment on, I've been in touch with her for a long time, maybe a year and a half before we are going to start shooting. And... Uh, at the time of shooting, I arrived to Belgrade like, like almost a month and a half before. And I uh, spent every day with her. I wanted actually the character that I was creating, I wanted completely to resemble her. I didn't want to imagine, you know, some kind of a woman. I had a real person in front of me. And that was a, a huge responsibility at the same time. When you create a character that, uh, that you know, that exists, you know. You don't want to hurt the person. You don't want to exaggerate, you know, just uh, because of your uh, artistic appetite, you know. And uh, I just wanted her to be portrayed in the best possible way, the way, the closest to her real persona. And I started spending time with her I was talking a lot to her. Of course, uh, in the beginning, she was closed, you know, and she wasn't, she was hesitant probably to reveal more than it was necessary. But, you know, it, it was very intimate. It became very intimate relationship. Uh, and she started a little by little, she started opening her heart in front of me. She, and that was my opportunity to ask her many questions, you know, about her story. Uh, and uh, she was, how would I say, she was happy to do so because there was, there's this, you know, the, the, the moment that I like of motherhood, uh, when what you, I mean, she sensed that I understood completely, you know, how she must have felt years ago and today to this day, how, how does she, how she feels, you know? So, uh, I think then uh, the gratefulness uh, that I had for her uh, actually was something that was like, like a moment between two of us that allowed us to go deeper into this whole story and her intimacy. She taught me, you know, she taught me to sew. I've never been able, I've never done anything like that in my life before. And I was, you know, observing her, the way she walks, the way she talks, the way she smiles, you know. I asked her questions like, have, did you ever cry? Have you ever cried, you know? And she would tell me, for example, uh, no, I mean, yes, but only when I was alone, locked in my room, never in front of him, never in front of my family and, and those kind of stuff. So uh, she, that's her, you know, I was after the premiere when she saw the movie, when she saw the movie for the first time, that was like the, like the biggest compliment to me that she was, that she liked it, you know, and she told me something that's very, that's so amazing what she told me. She said, um, I'm watching you and I see myself but I cry for you, not for myself. So, uh, so that for us, that meant that the story that left her and became the story, you know, above that, that she was able to connect 
although she was, you know, the, 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 the main character in it. Thank you. Thank you, Snezhina. And I also think that uh, her performance is greatly supported by uh, the, the ambience overall. So Misha, can you tell us a little bit more how you decided on uh, uh, specifically what, the, the look of the film? Because we get this great grayness, the bureaucracy uh, of, the, of, the, of the present period. Can you tell us a little bit more what went into kind of thinking about these set designs as well? Yes, when I, when I uh, finished my script, I decided to make rules for myself and for all you know, crew. And I, we decided to uh, be in my director of photography, Dam Damian Radovanovic and uh, Anna Bulian, my uh, uh, production designer. We decided to um, have that, uh, first of all, the architecture of uh, our film. Uh, it's like uh, every building in our film is built uh, till 1980s, nothing, you don't have a building that it's like new or built before that time. And that architecture, that brutalism that we wanted to show uh, that new Belgrade uh, blocks where our main protagonist lived and uh, we decided to go to that yellow and that brown palette because I wanted, I don't know why right now, but I wanted to have like a very hot atmosphere, not hot in, in the picture, but you know, like warm and unpleasant. And I wanted to somehow show uh, to the audience that um, even it's a summer uh, and it's beautiful, everything is beautiful something is wrong and you know you are all sweat and and we shot the our film it was like um, 40 de degrees celsius in one small apartment in in uh, new belgrade on 11th floor and you know sound uh, guys that doesn't allowed us to open the window because of the sound and everything and it was like like very very hot and um, probably everything is you know influenced on that that you know a little bit um, um, little bit uh, uh, almost claustrophobic look of the film and i decided to uh, put uh, the camera always in front of my protagonist you don't have like uh, shots from the back. The camera is always in front of Snezhana or our main protagonist. And uh, I want to capture every moment, movement of the face and every feeling that Snezhana have, because uh, this, is, this is our way to tell this story. And you know, for me, as a director, it's most important to bring up emotion in the first, uh, you know, this is for me the, the most important thing. And I, I try to find that in every shot and in every composition. Uh, she's uh, always alone or most of the time she's alone. She's framed very, very uh, symmetrical and somehow that lonely and we you decided to use wide format like like uh, an amorphic format and this is give you even more space than you can see and uh, that's that's the language of our film and the pace of the film is lit is slow but you know for me it's important to catch the audience at the beginning and then to slow, slow involve all the, and to everyone become particip participants of our film and to, uh, to, to somehow um, be with film from the beginning and think about film from the first shot to the end of the show, till the, the, till the last shot. No, this, this atmosphere yeah, and ambience is like remarkable, really. And I remember when I first started watching the film, I was like, all oh, right, it's really getting me into that claustrophobic 
gray space and it, it really worked so well. I think the choices were, were really incredible. Um, I, I want to pass and, it off to Diana. Or, and, or, and if I, I, yeah, I, sure. can, I can add something. Uh, and uh, it was uh, really hot. It was the summertime, you know, and uh, uh, the temperature was between 30 and 40 degrees. So we were literally suffering, you know. <laughs> and now suffering with that wig on my head, you know, and in a small space when you can't turn the AC on uh, because of the sound, you know, and we are all in a small apartment with a lot of lights, you know, and you can imagine, you know, it was easy to create that kind of atmosphere. And yet the images feel so cold at the same time because of the situation. That's what's also incredible about it. Yeah. I would, I would add, um, there is a sense to the film uh, of quiet intensity. It is incredibly intense. Uh, um, there, there is a sense of dread um, uh, and yet it's quiet. And uh, Snezhna, that's reflected in your performance. I would describe it as quiet intensity. Uh, Miroslav just said, uh, you're often alone. I would add, you also don't really say much for most of the film. You convey so much through by other means and we can sense how much is buried. There's moments when you explode or things come through, but never really fully um, um, as just sort of the, the, you know, cathartic moment. At some point you do slap your daughter uh, um, and uh, sort of lose it. But for the most part, it's all kept in mirroring the film's quiet intensity. And I just, if I can speak um, uh, for myself, found your um, performance to be just this incredibly anchoring emotional um, uh, strength of the film that keeps you glued, uh, as quiet as it is, as, as little dialogue as there is. And I actually didn't know about the true stories that are behind the film, uh, just sort of slowly unraveling in that sense and realizing what the story is about, I credit to your own performance so much. So I really want to congratulate you on this incredible well, thank achievement. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, it, those kinds of roles are very challenging, and but as an actress, as an actor, I really embrace them with all my heart because uh, I always wanted to explore these uh, deep or dark sides of human nature, you know, and uh, as a person, I'm so different, so much different, you know, I, I am more sensitive, I am more emotional, I am much weaker than Drinka, you know, and I had the opposite problem during the, uh, the, the process of, of uh, making this character. I, you know, there were situations when I literally felt like I couldn't, uh, you know, uh, hold my tears, you know, and I had to because of her. And, uh, and many times I thought how she could, how could she, you know, uh, be in this situation and not show anything, you know, at the police station, in the hospital, uh, seeing him for the first time. And, you know, cause you know, I would break as a person, you know? So for me, I had to hold back all that I felt, you know, and the work was uh, very subtle and inner, you know, uh, it's like instead of showing, but sometimes for the actor, you know, it's much easier to show what you feel than to hide, you know, my process was completely the opposite. I had to, to feel what I feel and to hide it all the time. And, uh, and to be really, as you said, like subtle and minimalistic with, uh, with everything that I've done. So, um, especially I remember the last scene, you know, and uh, when she let him go, you know, and that's, that was the hardest one to do because, you know, I was literally, you know, there were moments, you know, like I felt like I'm gonna break, <laughs> I'm gonna break apart, you know, and, uh, but thinking of her always gave me so much strength, you know, and I, you know, I would step out, you know, walk, compose myself, come back, you know, with all my strength and then do it her way. So that's, that's, that's her. Absolutely. And that, I, I have to say, uh, no matter how many times I watched the film, that's the gut-wrenching scene where 
you're kind of anticipating what is she going to do what she yeah. said she's looking for the truth yeah. that's all she wants she wants the truth she's facing the worst fear any parent uh, 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 i mean that's her reality the, the worst fear any parent could face which is losing their child but then also no closure because she doesn't know no. what really happened yeah because you know faced by by him and he asks what do you want from me her answer is actually so surprising and it is right. so what a, the mother uh, such a caring mother would do as you would describe it is letting him go yeah but uh, i think that that's we really uh, in the process we, we we discussed you know the end many times misha and me and uh, with elma and dulix you know and milena the other producer we really uh, discussed this end you know and but I, we all thought that she herself came to that conclusion that, you know, uh, that whatever she achieved at the end, you know, although she never disclosed that, but I felt that she, that, that she got that, whatever she achieved actually was for nothing. In, in a sense that, uh, you know, she lost everything by not being her mother all those years, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lost parenthood, a lost, you know, moments of, you know, when you uh, uh, look and uh, 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 look at your kid growing every day and, and you share your love and care for him, you know, those moments, she, she, they, they're gone. She, she'll never get that back. And, and then by finding him also, when you think, you know, what did she achieve? She just ruined maybe one life. Because, you know, uh, for him, there was also probably a like, horrific moment to learn that he was adopted, you know? And then when you, when you look at this story from all different angles, what was for her at the end to do? What did she achieve? What did she accomplish, you know? And the only thing she could do was like to let him go. You know, and then to care and to love him from from distance. So I guess that um, she still, you know, is in touch with him from time to time, less and less. Uh, you know, but probably the 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 the, the disappointment, you know, or the and this the whole tragedy, you know, uh, didn't saw anything absolutely so yeah. there was no closure really so before yeah, we, exactly. we, have, we have a question for our producer ulix so heads up ulix um but i do want to say that at that point and and for those uh, viewers who might watching uh, be watching us live right now and, and yet to stream the film because it's still available until tomorrow this is based on true stories of some 500 people at least known 500 families who have been told uh, at the time their children were born in hospitals that their infants died. Uh, and there have been suspicious circumstances that uh, led many parents and families to think that that wasn't the case. Um, and uh, uh, as the ending of the film states so far, um, none of the uh, suspicions have been proven uh, um, uh, officially. I don't know if that's changed, but that the, that the infants were actually um, sold for adoption or who knows what in some sort of organized crime scheme. And this is the story of one of those mothers who never gave up uh, even though she was uh, assumed to be crazy by most of the people in her life uh, and by the institutions uh, of the state. Um, so at that moment, the crucial moment, Snezhana, I just wanted to point out when she lets him go, that's the first time that we actually, up until that point, uh, Anna is in virtually every scene of the film. At that moment, we switch to uh, the son's point of view and we actually follow him and what he perceives and things. Uh, and so that's both for Miroslav and, and you, Snezhna, I, I just thought that was that amazing sort of like a, a, a zooming out or dollying out shot where he's walking away from her and she's kind of breaking down because of the, uh, of, of the toll that it took 
uh, for her to let him go. And then we follow him. Uh, that was incredibly powerful. If either of you wants to comment on that final little uh, tidbit of the film before we I love that part. I love that part of the film, really, because, you know, uh, somehow when she touched him, he passed him everything. And then the, this is the end of her story and the beginning of his story. And uh, because he put some, some, some idea about that in, in that moment, and that idea will grow. And, and for me, this is somehow happy end of the film, even if it's not happy end of the film. But there is, there is a hope that something will happen at the end and probably he will find her again and uh, uh, listen to her. And this I love. Uh, and th that formal thing with Dolly and moving uh, with him, it's somehow normal. And we are talking about that circling all the time, circling of emotions, circling of uh, what happened to us, everything. And uh, because of that, I love that. And, uh, and I'm somehow yeah. proud of it, that we uh, have yeah. that idea and to move from her to him. And, and that, yeah, that moment is also like uh, giving us all some kind of hope uh, because, you know, uh, she still doesn't know in real life whether the boy that she found is her son. She never uh, wanted to, to do any kind of testing, to, you know, to prove, you know, whether that's the case or not, I guess, because he must be very afraid. I, I think, and Misha once told me about it, that uh, uh, he probably m must be scared of the possibility that he is not her son, because there is there's something that, that he liked about the idea of being her son, you know. Um, and the, as I said, the possibility that he's not probably was scary for him as the other one, you know, the same. So uh, in, in our story, uh, what the, you know, the, the situation when he comes to, 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 their, to, to her apartment, you know, and then touches the objects on the drawer, you know, like moves them actually, you know. Uh, this is something that she does through the whole movie, you know, and at the end he does that. That's the tiny moment of hope, you know, that this will have happy end, this, that he is her son and that they'll be one day uh, united. Uh, and I guess that's something that we all wanted to see at the end, you know doesn't matter how small sign was, but that, you know, something that I want, that to, have, want, for. I want to include Ulix uh, uh, here as well. Um, Ulix, this is your debut as, as a producer. Um, it's, not, it's not, I'm, it's I, not. I wasn't going to correct you, but it, it's totally irrelevant, but it's not, it's okay. What was what was the what was the film that was the there was your there was a before that you produced? I mean. Oh, there was there there was uh, the, actually there are quite you know there are two or three films, but yeah, um, a white My, white world. There, there was a little co-production that we did with Slovenia, and you know there was a. Another film that Oleg Novakovic directed. So yeah, this is not mine, but that's okay. Totally irrelevant. Let's speak about stitches. That's okay. My my poor research or our no research. no that's okay. Uh, Don't worry about it. Really. Not so uh, anyhow, but I do want to then ask you. Uh, you were you 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 were born in Belgrade. You you also yes. know the, you know plus know the place quite well. Um, but I'm I'm wondering uh, in terms of your involvement in the film. Um, how you decided to to actually to take this film on, so to say, and how your collaboration with, with Misha really started. And also from just a role of a producer, because a lot of these films also are, uh, they present kind of specific risks sometimes, depending upon what 
uh, what what film what one film can reveal about specifically a state uh, a place about its people and what kind of reception these films are going to have and could you speak a little bit about this because these these problems that the film also deals with are, are systemic are deep and are not, not just particular to Serbia we find this uh, across the region as well yeah so uh, uh, I First, I, uh, before this film, I worked with Nisha on uh, his first feature called Redemption Street. And uh, this is where we met, uh, both personally and professionally. And for the work in his film. Oh, Alex, you're muted now. Um... Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I worked with Misha on his first film, Redemption Street, and uh, for, the, for the work in his film and the role that I play, uh, I won every single award in the region for the performance of that film, in, including the Heart of Sarajevo and the Sarajevo Film Festival for the best actor. And it was also, you know, it was also a, a film that dealt with, you know, not uh, a topic that everyone would necessarily like to deal with in Serbia or in the region, we had to do, which had to deal with, you know, with the war and war crimes and so on and so forth. So this is where we met, and uh, um, not only that we had a beautiful director-actor uh, relationship, we also, you know, became friends. Uh, and the the story of Stitches, I mean, Misha is a very, you know, he's a very nice. Um, He's a beautiful human being. So out of his sensitivity uh, and, you know, kind of his radar for what's right and what's wrong with this world, he stumbled upon this story. Um, and while he was still thinking about, you know, and, and sort of didn't have the script or anything, by whatever reasons, he decided that, you know, this woman is going to be played by, by Snezhen. And then once he decided that Snezhena is going to play the lead role, and as I said, I, I, and we had a beautiful relationship, and I already had a few uh, very decent uh, projects under my producer's belt. He asked me, you know, okay, would you be interested, you know, to take on this project as a producer? And of course, I said yes. There was, you know, absolutely no reason uh, why, why wouldn't I? Um, the, the 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 script and the film as we see it and this is where both Misha and Elma have been you know very pragmatic uh, considering the the conditions in the regional cinematography I mean I assume you already know that you know in order to raise the funds you you can't raise the funds in a single country you need to start raising the fund all funds all over the regions a region all you know all Europe or Europe and and at the best, you know, the funds are very modest. Otherwise, as you, Diana, were saying, you know, and this is what we were speaking during the film, I mean, out of this film, I mean, first, her story lasts over 20 years. Second, you know, it's, we could make a totally different film, what happens with a kid after he, you know, after he understands that, you know, and he wasn't aware what has happened to him, and now what, what happens with his young life and how does it evolve? Uh, you know, further. So there was so much, you know, there was so much material, there was so much juice, but we had to, you know, we had to uh, 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 choose the most economic uh, path with, a, uh, with the highest potential, potential, potential results. And this film was uh, really easy to finance. You, you know, it was, it was getting support for, for many fund that, you know, we applied to. Uh, it was extremely um, exciting to be a part of this project, even though, you know, the role of a producer is sort of on the, you know, on the, on the, on the sidelines. And it was exciting to see how it, you know, it changes its, its different, you know, forms and shapes and, it finally, and when it, you know, gets finally uh, to, you know, to where it is. And I think that all of us are very proud uh, of, you know, of work that, uh, that has been done and uh, I mean it's one of those projects where the subject is uh, really tough and uh, but we had uh, a good fortune you know a good wind 
uh, in our, you know, in our bag throughout throughout this project. We shot for 27 days, which is very modest number of days for, you know, for uh, the material considering, but uh, uh, yeah. 27, and, 27 hot days, I gather. Extre <laughs> ex 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 extremely hot days. And we were very fortunate to open the film at the Berlin Film Festival. And, you know, the I mean, you guys since, both Sejan and Misha has said, oh, okay, let me remember, you know, let me remember what have I done, what we have done. So the film opened, you know, uh, at the Berlinale in 2019. And ever since it traveled probably to, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 festivals. I don't know, it won multiple awards both for, you know, Elma, Misha, Snezhana, film itself. Uh, it was shortlisted for best 40 uh, European films of 2019. It was sold in, um, you know, from China to whole South America to different parts of Europe. So yeah, it had a, nice. it, it had a nice life, and it still, you know, it still sort of does. I mean, we are here uh, talking to you. Absolutely, it continues to have and resonate with audiences. Uh, I just wanted to quickly list, uh, echoing on what Ulix just said, uh, I actually took a screen grab from the beginning of the film. Uh, uh, it, it came with the financial support of the Film Center of Serbia, the Slovenian Film Center, the Croatian Audiovisual Center, the Foundation of Cinematography, Sarajevo and Your Images, among other things. Um, so it's really kind of, uh, that's the that's the reality of uh, making films in the region, even if you do your best to keep it low budget, but it's kind of Yugoslavia almost um, in, 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 a, in a microcosm here. Um, and kudos to you for pulling all of this off. Um, I do want to ask about um, uh, since uh, Ulix has also mentioned the resonance of the film internationally and its successful run um, in uh, different film festivals and the awards it's gotten, I want to ask about um, uh, what effect, if any, it has had in Serbia uh, with regards to the conversation about this issue uh, that is a real life issue. But before that, I do want to, did want to make a note uh, of the music. Misha, maybe this is for you. Aleksandra Kovac. Uh, was the composer and Gabi Novak performs uh, Neko Misli na Tebe, uh, the song that plays at the end. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that particular choice and how that song played into kind of closing the story? Because I think yes. it's it also really powerful. There is a, there is a story behind it. Uh, we um, When we finished the film, we asked uh, to... Uh, to, from Alexander Koch uh, um, to uh, make music for our film. And we have had the music through all our film. But uh, at the end, uh, somehow we decided not to have the music through the film. Because the, on that point, I, I don't know... Uh, for me, um, I love the music and I love how the music deal with emotion, but somehow uh, the film is much more, uh, it's, it's more powerful, uh, it, it become more powerful without music. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that place is where we have a music. Now uh, we decided to make music just from the sound of, the, of the atmosphere and um, and then at the end we, we had that song on the radio that uh, and I used some old old song uh, um, just for me old song from Yugoslavia and uh, but somehow um, uh, I realized that that song is uh, in other movies and we decided to make a new song. And then I asked Alexandra, can you make us something like this? And she told me, well, but this is like a big hit. How can I make this? Come on. And I told her, let's try and we, we will see. And then Alexandra uh, called me two hours after our first conversation and tell me, I have something for you. 
And I think it's good. I have everything. I have words. I have lyrics. I have uh, music. And I will send it to you. And she sent me uh, like demo of herself, uh, uh, you know, like singing that and playing. And then um, I, I sent it to Ulix and Ulix told me, and I, I, Ulix told me, I think it's good. And Snezhna told me, I think it's good. And we, uh, uh, and I t told to her, okay, everything is okay. And uh, we will go with this music, but uh, I don't want that you will, that you sing this song. And she asked me why, because uh, uh, Alexander is very famous pop star in Serbia and in region. And I told her, it must be some old, old woman. And, and then I told to her, well, it doesn't matter who, you decide, but it must be old voice. I don't know why. And then she called me two days after that and told me, well, um, do you think, uh, what do you think about Gabi Novak? And I told to her, come on, it's something that, you know, Gabi Novak is like, legend here in region and and uh, Gabi Novak loved the song and uh, she she recorded that song in Zagreb uh, um, but for 15 years for uh, uh, yes for 15 years Gabi didn't record the song and when Misha said you know uh, how should I say just to be clear old woman not in a sense of old woman in sense of age but you know somebody uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, relating to the to the authors of the same of the same era as the song that he had already chosen to be at the end of the of the film, but that was already used and very famous and so on and so forth. So this is we're talking about the the generation of singers that you know that Gabi Novak belongs to. Of course, Gabi being you know the the most famous one. And then Alexandra contacted her, and, but she was like, you know, don't, don't have your hopes high. I mean, she didn't record anything, you know, in 15 years. So, and then two days later in the midnight, you know, Alexandra received the call and, you know, it was yes. And then it was just a matter of organizing the recording session in Zagreb. And luckily I was shooting something in Zagreb at the time. And I think that it's absolutely, yeah, absolutely beautiful Snezhena things. And this is what I've been listening forever and ever because she thinks that the song is not loud enough at the end. And I could agree, but because we went through so many sound, you know, post sound post-production, how should I say, changes. And of course the song comes from the radio. So it's not, you know, it's not a music. It's not a film music. It's you know. It's a part of yes. of, uh, of, of uh, you know real source in the scene. And then of course we reset it and we restart it once the you know once the uh, uh, credits start rolling. But still, she felt that you know that it yeah, should have yeah, been more. Uh, yeah, I thought you know, that this song deserved always like more space, you know, and you know that at the end when you know I don't know. I, I always thought people start, you know, if they're in theater, you know, that they start, you know, jumping up and don't pay attention to the song, but these girl. lyrics and the voice, you know, and I always thought, oh, they must hear this. They, they had to be louder, you know. But this is, you know, I think that in a, in a way that how Misha decided to do it, I think that it's, it's a correct choice because what he was also talking that, you know, we've been struggling, he's been struggling, is the film have, going to have the music at all or no? This, you know, this was the, we, we were aware about this dilemma while, you know, Alexandra was composing the music. And when you are dealing with the, you know, with such a high level uh, maternal feelings, you know, how do you balance because you want to tell your story, you want to reveal the emotions, you want to hide the emotions, you want to provoke the emotions, but you also, you never want to be over the top. You don't want to be 
sentimental or syrupy sweet or you know so it's it's and you know the decision that these songs comes from the you know, radio starts playing only after you know after we see the black screen at the very end i think that it's it's consistent with her story with drika's story it's it's a correct decision on the same level that snezhna would say oh i as an actor you know or as a person would most likely cry but she wouldn't so i would go away you know to take five deep breaths and come back into a shock the same way it's like all of us would be like oh you know to love this to have this melodramatic cathartic end unfortunately this film didn't have one i mean not this film her story yeah, didn't have yeah, one true. we were hoping because the development process was you know quite a it was long and we were hoping that we might have a schindler's list kind of moment because she drinka uh, the the woman um, inspiration for you know for the story and the main character she has contacts with her son there of course not as often as they used to be they have been discussing a potential you know dna uh, testing for various reasons that we don't go into details that did not happen but you know we were hoping that if they had decided to just go and do this testing that Misha could go with them you know with a camera and regardless of what the of the of the outcome of the test that we might have this you know this um, uh this uh, this scene documentary the moment of truth yep. recorded mm-hmm. unfortunately you know it never happened so we had to turn the volume down we had to you know sort of mute our emotions a bit because this is consistent with her uh journey and with Misha's approach to the whole material you know throughout absolutely uh, um, yeah and and with the fact that even if drink story had uh, seen a concrete closure for 499 at least other families it might not have probably that's that's the said statistic with which the film ends and those are just the numbers we do know um i did want to uh, did want to bring up that song because um uh, it hit uh, uh, such a, such an emotional uh, uh point and I, I, it does start as diegetic music it's it's something that the characters are listening to or anna is listening or her son is listening and uh, listening to as he's looking at her and then it switches and i i know you're looking at it all three of you from the insider's perspective but i can tell you from my outsider's spectator perspective it didn't feel too uh, uh, too quiet in fact it was just bright and i completely understand what you mean by um a a a the voice of a woman who has who can bring so much emotion in into that performance yeah. who experience uh, right uh, I, and as i start as as the song started i thought to myself what so what old song is this and why haven't i heard it before and i, I had the same thought to see that it was alexandra kovac who composed it uh, i recognized gabi novak's voice and i was just shocked why did i not know this song because it's it's composed for the from so congratulations on that as well and all your thoughts i think we have to start wrapping it up amir i, I just i just want to i just want to finish with one thing because you asked me something and then we went into a music which i think is also relevant and important and you said you know did it have any or i'm not sure maybe uh, 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 about you know did it have any kind of impact, impact in serbia yeah, so on and so forth really unfortunately like everything today where we live in the world of fake news you know of course it didn't have any major impact right but since the film has been selected uh, at, uh, for the berlinale which was in february and we had the belgrade premiere in march and it was released in cinemas right after we did occupy you, you know the, the the media space in serbia fully but that is not relevant what was absolutely touching and the the premiere in belgrade was something really really special uh 
the audience was, you know, packed. It was probably like, I don't know, almost 2,000 people in the, in the room. And when we went out, you, you know, in front of the audience at the end of the screening, first there was a banner across, I mean, probably like 20 meters long, like or maybe 30 meters long, which was saying, Misho, thank you. Misho meaning Misha is uh, Miroslav's nickname, our director's nickname. Thank you for recognizing our pain. So it was, you mm -hmm. know, filled with women who Shit. apparently have the same kind of problem that our main character has. So it was super emotional. And then, of course, at the very end, Drinka, our inspiration, uh, you know, after really everybody, sure you know, the got their applause and then Snezhan and Misha took her out and, you know, she had her... It was you know, like most uh, yeah, and you know some sort of a catharsis closure, but you know, yeah. yeah. So even that act of recognition, seeing yourself recognized on the screen, even if it doesn't change anything, unfortunately, in a systemic, systematic level, um, with resolving these cases, but but seeing yourself recognized on the screen mattered on an emotional level. That's really powerful. Thank you for sharing that story. Thank you all. And I think um, we're, it's kind of hard to, to stop this conversation because I keep thinking of other questions specifically about the state of the film right now and so on, but we'll, we do have to close it. But I do have one last question, which we like to ask at the end, and this is for Misha. Um, What's next? Are you working on something that you can share with us? Oof. Uh, well, I, I, I just finished one script and it's deal uh, with... Um, this is a script about violence and that's it. I just wanted to tell that and nothing else. About violence but, uh, 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 that's happened in schools mm -hmm. between like young teenagers. And wow. it's uh, almost based on true story, but it's not, it's fiction. And I'm preparing that, nothing else. And we will see, maybe uh, for two, three years, we will. Well, let me tell you, he really, he shot, he shot a TV show in the meantime, like he <laughs> shot a, a TV show in Belgrade that had a very successful run on, on Serbia's, national, Serbia's national television. And the script that he's talking about, he's, you know, he uh, applied at the film, Serbian Film Center. So, you know, and the, the script is very well positioned. So hopefully he'll get, you know, the funding. So, yeah. We hope so. And we hope to see you back at the festival. Where might be art. <laughs> yeah, man. But in person. Of course I am. Love By you, man. Way, I'm not the producer of his next project. He went to the other guy. So forget yeah, well, that. yeah, no, I, should, that's okay. I love you still. <laughs> well it's a perfect note to end on end on the note of love uh, for each other in these rather precarious and difficult times uh, thank you thank you Snezhana thank you Oli. thank you thank you Misha so much for thank you guys thanks for having us it was such a thank pleasure thank you on my behalf as well and Snezhana and Oleg this is our second conversation this week we look forward to many more uh and uh yeah, yeah, I, told, Diana, I told you you have to once the everything reopens you have to have a covid selection for all the film that you have screened only online you gotta bring them all here and you know show them live and we go out and have fun and everything exactly exactly so we will have the covid retrospective of the film. yes we had to bunker our put uh, online uh, because of present circumstances, we will have them in theater and then we will party after. Yes. Those who have attended the parties know uh, others will just have to be there. Uh, yes. And Miroslav, we hope you join us and we look forward to all your future projects. Thank you, Thank you Thank all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Have Thank a good you. night. Bye. Bye. Ciao, Ciao. 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 Ciao.